Right, so uh, with this rubidium standard here of mine, you may have seen me mention in a previous video that I was planning on putting this into a box and using a um, video distribution amplifier like this thing here, which is in here. Um, I can get it out. Like this thing here to uh, amplify and distribute the 10 megahertz reference signal for my bench. Now the problem is this unit here, I tested it and it doesn't do anything with the 10 megahertz. It does nothing. And I tried putting other frequencies in and nothing. So I don't know if that's faulty or whether it's just incompatible or what. I'm not quite sure what else is going on there. So my distribution amplifier idea is um, currently on hold until I sort that mess out. And I thought, well, in that case, I'll just do the rubidium side. And I was going to um, get this, basically, and put it into this nice black case I've got here. All right, so this is quite a nice slim case. The rubidium's a nice fit for it. As you can see there, it'll be a good fit. So with the glare on there, it's a bit bad. Um, and so then I've got space to put, you know, connections on here and so on. And I could put a you know, B and C socket on it and a power switch and you know LED indicator for power and lock and that kind of thing um, or you know 12 volt input or something like that so I've got space down one side to put all those kinds of controls in I'm undecided as yet whether I do an output on the back or on the front um, I don't know if I put it on the front and then I decided to use a rear output you know if I if I you know then loop it to something we're just hitting on the bench do I really want to have a B on C on the front, the cable loop into the back. I mean, I don't know. Um, so I'm a little bit undecided about exactly how to set that piece up yet. Right now, I mean, I'm tempted to have the output on the back. Um, I don't know. I'm also tempted to put one on both sides. I could put an output on the front and the back, so the back normal, and I could tap into the front one if I need to. You know, um, I don't know how well this would handle that, though. I might be okay. Um, I'm just trying to kind of allow for any situation about how I might actually configure this. Now, what I did want to build this thing up because it required a 15 volt and a 5 volt power supply. Although it'll actually work on 12 volt just fine, it does do it. It does work on 12. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, but it's rated at 15 volt. So I've got a little 5 volt regulator on here. So I can show 15 volts straight in or 12 volts, whatever. And the regulator then takes care of the 5 volt supply. So this is a single supply going to it, which is through these two wires here. This wire here, the purple, is the output frequency. And I have noted on here what the others are, but I've kind of been I've been handling around this. They've rubbed off. I can't. I do have the data sheet for this thing somewhere. So um, you know, I'm not too concerned by that, but it's got like TX and RX inputs and you know, well, connections, which are all just here, um, which obviously I'm not using. So I, I'm not really too worried about those. The main thing I'm worried about is power. And the output, and obviously the ground side of it, um, which is all grounded on here right now onto this main PCB here. So, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, it's not going to be that hard to do. It's a pretty straightforward thing. So, the hardest bit is I've got to drill holes in this and mark this up and figure out how exactly how I'm going to actually configure it. Um, so, first thing I'll do is get all these screws out of here. Let's find myself a suitable screwdriver. Maybe this one. Mm, no, not that one. I need to go to the other bench, hold on. Okay, hopefully suitable screwdriver. Yeah, it's better. My black one is a bit big for this, so that's why I didn't go do that one. But, uh, I probably won't, I don't know, I might, I might go and get my drill and stuff and, and video actually drilling all the holes and uh, so I might just mark it out and just come back and once it's done it might be easier. I'm trying to do it all here rather than keep the mess in my garage rather than you know, all over my bench. I hate metal drillings everywhere, it's always a pain. So I've also got to figure out how I'm going to mount this. Um, I do have some tiny standoffs or I could just bolt it straight to the bottom case you know, drill straight through and, you know, oh, this is a bit tricky because of the way it's on that PCB, but it's not that bad. Now this case here came with a whole bunch of spares, look, all these screws that came with it. 
Um, don't need them. Yeah, so sounds like my wife's just got home. So I just heard a beep from my car alarm, so I'll probably stop for a second. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I drilled the hole in a panel. I just put some tape on the back of it here and, and drill through and, and so on. And um, same for that switch there, but I also used my little nibbler tool here to uh, cut out a square hole. So switch fits in a bit better. It's not a perfect fit, it's slightly loose, but it's okay. You know, it's good enough. It's not going to fall out or anything, it's just it's fine. So I've got those holes there for the LEDs. So I'm going to put two LEDs on it, one for red, one for green, which are going to be red for power, green for locked. So that's nice and logical. Um, I drilled out the holes in the bottom of the ball, bottom of the bottom plate there, and I drilled out the corner rivets of the rubidium. So these line up those holes, and I'll bolt through that. So it's uh, so it'll sit on the bottom plate, and that should help heat sink it as well. And uh, some three mil bolts or something. Now I have to just put some feet on the bottom plate on the on the other side, obviously. Now what I've decided to do is put the outlet, well the RF outlet, on the back. That way, um, say it's this way around, for example. That sits like that in the front panel. Actually, I'll do it. Actually, can't do it. No, it'll be like that. Front panel, like that rear panel. This side can have the BNC on it. So this cable. And hopefully this goes directly to the BNC. Um, actually goes that way around. So we'll see if it's long enough. It, no, it's not quite. Nope, that shot. Here we go. So holes are there, but it's, it's a bit too short probably to reach a BNC. I don't know, it's close. I mean BNC's going to be about there. Oh, look at that. It's not going to quite reach, is it? Oh, look at that. Doesn't matter. That's okay. Doesn't matter. I'll just put a little bit of extra wire on there. So the idea is that I'll just have one switch, you know, the switch on one side. Um, so that'll be that end like that, and then over here I'll have the BNC close to the actual outlet to try and minimise lengths, and that gets the wiring pretty much straight in, straight out. It's all a bit easier that way. So that's the plan. All right, so I've uh, drilled the hole in the back there, mounted the BNC socket on there, and um, I've aligned these LEDs. All I'm going to do is I've decided to common up the positive side so that they can both go to the 5 volt rail and then I'll feed the negative to the negative rail obviously through a drop down resistor and the um, negative of the um, lock indicator will do the same as this one here like if you look at this unit right now that's what I've got on here already I've got an LED on there and um, that's tied to the positive 5 volt rail and then that goes through the drop down resistor into the input. So that's basically, you know, wired up already. So I'll probably, I'll probably just desolder. Um, or shall I leave it intact? Nah, I'll, I'll desolder that leg there. I'll, I'll take the sleeving off, desolder that leg, run a wire off that to the, to the uh, LED on the front there. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, you know, all that's left to do, as you see, I've mounted this on the on the plate now. It still needs feet put on there yet, but uh, that's that part done. It should actually drop in there now. It should actually fit. There you go. That does drop in and fit. Okay, so it will actually go together. All I've got to do is do the wiring. Um, ah, one other thing I've got to do. Uh, see, I've, I've done something silly here. I have not fitted a power connection. So I have to think about whether I just have a couple of wires coming back or whether I actually put on like a 2.1mm socket. That's the other connection I need to do. So I shall have to do that too. I do have an oversight, but uh, that's fine. I'll go and do that. Okay, so it is built. I've got to use a uh, gland on the back here. Just drill a hole and put one of those cable glands in there. That's got like crimping ones. Um, I didn't have any 2.1mm chassis jacks, so I just had to do that. It's, it's fine. Uh, twin core cable coming in for 12 volts or 15 volts or 12 to 15 volts. BNC jack on the back there with a shielded coax um, going up to here, which is then all tied on there. That's the original um, LED wire there, which I've taken off the socket with a plug 
and I've run a new one on same colour wire, so at least I know you know which one's which. That's just saying because I need to go back to that for some reason, testing or something like that. And everything else is there, wired right up to the front panel here. Two LEDs are wired up. Um, let's bend this around a bit more. Let's get that a bit more tucked out of the way. And I'll see the power switch on the front now. This has got power going to it. I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> so um, let's close it up. And then we'll flick the power on. I haven't closed it up even yet. <laughs> I haven't done that. So it should shut. It does. Right. Okay, we had the power light at least. So whilst I'm waiting, I'll put these bottom screws in. Because it takes a few minutes for it to warm up. Okay, so I've been meaning to do this little project for a long time. Um, long time. I'll probably put all this in and finally goes and we'll probably have to take it back apart again. Instead of saving time, it's going to cost you time. But you know, probably going to jinx it by trying to be efficient. Anyway, so no green light yet. Ah, hmm, no, that's okay. Let's talk about the resistor value. I was going to tie it to the main input power, and I decided not to in the end. Because remember that it's supposed to be tied to the um, between the output of the rubidium and the 5 volt supply. Um, so I um, went to the 5 volt supply, and you know as existing NED was. So, um, but I forgot to change the resistor value. So I'm not quite sure if that's going to be an issue or not. It might end up being a bit dim because the resistor value is based on 12 to 15 volts. So it's got the same resistor value as this one, which is running off the main supply which is currently set at 12 volts let's just increase this a little bit and that's 15 volts there yeah the LED brightness isn't really changing in those voltages so that seems fine um, yes yeah, so I'm going to run it off 12 volts yeah, it can handle up to 15 but I'm going to run it off 12 and uh, let's wait for the LED to come on. It should be much longer. What I'll probably do actually while I'm waiting is hook up my Ferguson counter. I'll get the HP and I'll get a cable and I'll make sure that the frequency is coming out. I can do that too, can I? And dinner's almost ready, so hoping I can get this done in time before dinner's actually ready to go. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, so, shouldn't much longer now. Doesn't really take that long. There's 10 megahertz coming out on the counter, and it's uh, it's still trying to find lock. It's go, it drifts up and down until it finds lock. So it's not quite there yet. But the actual output is working. Um, actually, I'll just hold that. It can't be much longer. So, <sighs> come on, hurry up and lock. Come on. Still not there yet. Still trying to find it. It sweeps up and down in frequency, so it sort of goes right through its range to the top end, and then sweeps back down to the bottom end. Waits a bit, sweeps back up. And that's what they do. Um, and it just does that until it finds a lock point, you know, obviously as it's warming up. And eventually it'll sweep through, find the lock, and then that's it, it'll stop. And then it's obviously got, still got a warm up period where it's still got to settle down completely, but um, they, they basically, um, once they're locked, they're really, really close. And then there's not much time after that, they're actually pretty good. So, right, that is locked, and the green LED is on. Although it's a bit dimmer than I'd like. I might have to change that resistor value. But there you go. It's just, uh, oh, I can't turn the light off. So there you go. It works. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I think we have to change that resistor value. Damn it, I've already heat shrunk all that. <laughs> it's good enough for now. If it bothers me, I'll, I'll, I'll change it. Yeah, it's a bit dimmer than I want, but yeah. Anyway, it works. So that's that completed. Another project done. All I've got to do is put some labels on the front here to, to you know, label uh, power and lock and put Rubidium or something on it. I don't know. Alright, have a good one. Catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe.